So the US Air Force was paying $10,000 for a toilet seat that just didn't exist anymore. In this video, we're gonna talk about how 3D printing can fix that type of problem for these very old planes and all of these supply chains that are breaking down as parts just go out of production. So the story originally came up a few years ago. The Air Force was put on call by a US Republican Senator saying that, that a toilet seat was costing them $10,000 a piece. It was originally made by Lockheed Martin, but they stopped producing it in 2001 for this plane that had been created pre the 1980s. It was a Cold War era plane and they just let the molds wear out and thought, oh, we're not gonna have to replace toilet seats anymore. But then as this plane continued service and as other planes like it have had had extended lifespans to where there's going to be centennial planes that have existed and been in service for more than 100 years, there's an issue with spare parts because the ways of getting them made have just worn out and disappeared. So when the Air Force was having to replace this toilet seat that was custom designed for this plane, the issue they ran into is that that custom toilet seat had to be recreated every single time. If they wanted the part, they didn't call up the supplier and say, I need some more of those. They had to call up a machine shop and say, hey, here is a toilet seat, can you copy it? And then they'd have to reverse engineer it and mill it down or carve it out of a block of wood or something along those lines. A very inefficient way of doing it, but they had to do it because there was no other way to get these parts. You might imagine, oh, they could go to Walmart and just screw in a new one, but they can't. For military applications and certainly aircraft, normal consumer off the shelf type of items don't always work because they just can't be certified to mill spec standards. So they do have to order this custom or make sure that it's made appropriately for its application. You really don't want some zebra pattern toilet seat inside of a C-17. But what the Air Force did end up doing is that they started pursuing 3D printing for making these type of components. Obviously, 3D printing has all kinds of benefits because you can 3D scan the existing piece, make some tweaks to it, and get it made fairly quickly and reasonably cost-effectively because you're not having to carve something out of a block of aluminum to get a replacement. And it's really surprising that this is not done more often. 3D printing is an awesome solution for recreating old parts, but there have been a few issues that have prevented 3D printing from taking over more parts. There's obviously this need. Like we say, there's tons of planes that are wearing out and manufacturers just don't make the parts anymore. Now, the Air Force would love to use 3D printing for more parts, as they did with that toilet seat. They ended up getting it made for about 300 bucks with 3D printing, a huge reduction from the 10,000 that they were doing before. But the reason they can't do it with other parts and pieces are for a few issues around IP and just data collection in general. If Lockheed Martin or some some other manufacturer made a part, the military does not necessarily have the rights to recreate a version of that part for spare pieces. There might still be a patent or other types of IP attached to it that prevents the military as the consumer of the product from just replicating it because that would be theft from the people who created it. Now, for a lot of these old Centennial planes, this is not really the issue because these planes, the patents have worn out. And quite frankly, it's an easy thing to kind of get around because if you're making a part for 3D printing, you actually need to redesign it for 3D printing. And we talk about this on the channel all the time. But when you redesign that part, you have effectively made a new part. Rather than being a spare part or a copy or an OEM approved type of piece, it becomes an accessory or an improvement or an upgrade kit, which no longer falls underneath those IP laws. Sure, I'm gonna say this, I'm an engineer, hashtag not a lawyer, but that's the basic premise of the whole thing. Now, the other concern is that if they were to just reach out to any 3D printer shop, they don't know that the pieces that they're giving to that shop are actually being protected. 3D Systems was literally fined millions of dollars because they were given a military part to 3D print, but they uploaded it to their Chinese servers to be made overseas in their service bureau on the wrong side of the pond, which is a big no-no. And this is an issue too, as people use increasingly Chinese manufactured machines in order to make 3D printed parts. So the military cannot heavily lean on 3D printing because it's unprotected and unverified without a full security audit of the company. Now we have a benefit in this regard because we both manufacture our own machines and we produce all of our own software. So there is no third party that is Chinese based that could be getting access to any of our data. So if there are any generals out there looking for spare parts, hit us up because we've actually got a good workflow to make sure this can get done. Another issue has always been scale. Certainly if you have to print a toilet seat every other week or something like that, that's fine. Printing can do it. But people think that 3D printing can't produce the tens of thousands of parts to either build or fully replace 
all of this old aircraft. But that's completely incorrect. We produce tens of thousands of parts all the time. It's not that hard. Now, some folks would say, oh, there's the certification. But again, I go back to the design. We are able to make fully airworthy parts that can be certified by the FAA and any other body that needs it, including mil-spec. We produce military spec parts all the time for clients that work with us. So 3D printing is not inferior or unable to produce these types of pieces. We can absolutely replace what has ever been made before. Heck, we could replace aluminum parts with carbon fiber parts that would be equivalent, sometimes even better. But there are huge advantages for using 3D printing beyond what everybody has looked at. Right now, each military airbase has a supply officer who is calling up the local machine shop to make the parts that they might need. And if they need a different type of part, then they have to go to a different supplier. However, if they can just aggregate all of the plastic components that they need, they can basically offload those to 3D printing companies like us, we would reverse engineer them and just provide those parts to them as they need them. We can be a single source for all the parts because specialty isn't really the issue that we're dealing with. You want a single source so that you can feed all the parts through it without all the rigmarole every time. Someone who is certified, reliable, and has the scale necessary to meet the demands of what the military needs. And it is lower cost. This cannot be overemphasized. They had the toilet seat that cost $10,000 because they were buying it from third party manufacturers who had to custom make it every single time. Using 3D printing, they have already been able to drop the cost of this component to $300, which is still expensive, but it's the military. Let's live with it. They can do that for so many other components as well that historically are just caught in this hole because the ways of getting them made have just worn out and disappeared. So 3D printing offers an optimal opportunity for the US military to upgrade their equipment, get the spare parts that they need, reduce the budget, and do it effectively and for the long term. Because as soon as a part is inside of a 3D printing supply chain, it is there forever. Unlike traditional manufacturing that eventually wears out, disappears, and you have to get the tool remade. Printing, as soon as the file is created, that file is there forever. Kind of like this YouTube video. You're gonna be able to find this YouTube video 100 years from now. Unlike if I put it onto film and then you pull out the VHS and then shove it in the VCR a few times, that film's gonna wear out. 3D printing is the YouTube video, whereas traditional manufacturing is the VCR. So how do you want to build a military that's able to be sustainable and continue to have spare parts? It seems like a fairly obvious solution when it reduces costs, creates long-term reliability, and allows you to take care of everything that needs taken care of today cheaper than it has ever been done before. Have a great day, everybody.